and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be taking a look at a sequel to a puzzle I did. Well, it feels like a couple of years ago. I might be wrong, but this is by F Jam uh, and it's called The Graveyard of Shadows. And I think I did one before, but I, it was called The Graveyard of Something, The Graveyard of probably despair but I don't remember <laughs> um, anyway I know Mark just did an F jam puzzle um, the other day uh, and if I'm not mistaken I don't know how I know this maybe it's from watching Mark's video but F jam is sort of some super duper physicist I think um, and physicists are very clever people so this is probably going to be a very interesting and hard puzzle um, and yeah, it involves basically we have to find a way through the graveyards. You can see each each cage in the grid has a grave. I don't know whether it's a date of death on it or something. We have to make our way through the graveyard from green to red. Um, and yeah, well, I'll tell you the rules in a more sophisticated in a more sophisticated way in just a moment or two. Um, but I have loads of things to tell you about first. Let me start with um, the question many of you have been asking, which is when is our Kickstarter launching uh, for our new book, Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits, Volume 2? Well, the Kickstarter, I can't give you a definite date because the way it works with Kickstarter is you have to go for a sort of an approval and the we're not sure whether it's going to be Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. or Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m., both UK time. Um, so as soon as I know, I will obviously let you guys know, but it's it's quite exciting times. The Kickstarter is really, really close. Um, next, Mark and I are streaming tonight. Now, I'm getting more and more nervous about this because Mark is getting more and more gloaty, frankly. Um, so what's happened here is that we're going to be doing the final two puzzles from our free app. And then I am going to be attempting some puzzles the Sudoku Skunk Works have put together, which are going to be anonymized puzzles. So I'm not going to know who set them. I get to solve them. And then I have to say who I think set them based off just my experience solving them, um, which I was pretty confident I could do. Um, until Mark started to be <laughs> so confident that I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so anyway, that, that's coming tonight, 10 o'clock UK time. We'd love to have your company. Um, next, I need to shout out more of you who have remarkably solved the duality 14 puzzle Sudoku hunt over on Patreon at the moment. The, the numbers we are getting in are quite, quite exceptional. And it's very clear that the Sudoku Skunk Works who created that pack need a big, big shout out. Um, because, well, the, the, what, you, what you guys are saying is that the, the puzzles are just incredible. So very well done to Kappa Techie, to Tom Walker, to Georg Grubner, Matthew Pearson, Harrison Beer, Pranav uh, Bansali, I think, uh, Zach Burns, John Sloss, Eric Propfi, John Mark Lau, Stephen Lee, Martin Collins, Nate Whitty, Elliot W and Zami. You were the next 15 uh, entries we've had in. I've got loads more names to read out, but we'll get onto that another day. Um, other than that, some birthdays today. There are quite a few birthdays. Amal in Saudi Arabia, um, been with us since James Charles shouted us out. Now that feels like a lifetime ago, um, but happy birthday, Amal. Um, to Derek, uh, 37 today from your girlfriend, Kendra. Um, Joe from your mate Malachi. I think we missed your birthday, Joe, um, but you got an unwelcome birthday present in the form of COVID. And Malachi thought you might want to shout out and make you feel better. So Joe, I hope you're feeling better. I hope you have, well, I hope you've managed to have some cake and all is, all is improving in the world. Um, Megan, it's your birthday today from your husband, Nick, and very well done on getting the correct answer to the duality puzzle hunt. Megan, I saw your name amongst the correct entries there. Um, and Pinar in Turkey, you're turning 25 today. And I'm not sure if this is today, but you might be taking your district governorship exam. I wish you all the best with that. And I hope it's not on your birthday. That would be a bit miserable. Um, and that's all. That's all the birthdays. So we can we can delay no longer. Let us check out this graveyard of shadows and see what for jam or F jam have got in store for us. Rules are as follows. In fact, I've just realized I need to change my glasses again, don't I? I've got the wrong glasses on. There we go. 
Uh, there we go. Yes, I've gone from yes, Clark Kent to Clark Kent version two. Unfortunately, I never seem to be Superman. Um, right, <laughs> I can't. Come on, glasses work. Right, there we go. I'm starting to be able to see. Normal Sudoku rules apply in graves bracket brackets cages. So the cages today have to be viewed as graves. Um, digits must sum to the day, month or year of the date on the grave. So that means those five cells, <laughs> well, these five cells here either sum to 23 to one or 25. Now, I think one of those is very much eliminatable quite fast. Let's look at that one. So those four cells either add to 20, 11 or 22. And actually all of those are clearly possible, whereas one can be ruled out from that one. Um, digits cannot repeat within graves. Escape the graveyard by carefully plotting an orthogonally connected path between the green and the red cells. The path may not cross the highest or lowest digits in a grave. Good grief. Right. So when we've worked out, so let's imagine that this was an 11 cage. We then know it would contain the digits 1, whoops, 1, 2, 3 and 5. And then what it would be saying is that we can't go through those two cells because that would be the lowest number in the cage. That would be the highest number in the cage. Um, what am I going to do to show the path here? Maybe let's use the pen tool. So we would go like this. Oh, no, hang on. Right. I've just realized something else about this. Do I have to go through the cells that are not the lowest in a cage? The path may not cross the highest or lowest digits in a grave. Hmm, maybe not then. Okay, so I think I think all we're learning here is that those two cells are definitely not on the path. These two cells may be on the path, but aren't necessarily on the path. That is my reading of the rules, which I hope is correct, or I'm going to be leading myself a merry old dance. Um, and yes, for those of you who sometimes ask this question, what does orthogonally mean? Well, orthogonally means two cells are orthogonally connected if they share an edge. If they share just a point, so those two cells are not orthogonally connected. They become orthogonally connected if I put that one in the middle of them, because now these two are orthogonally connected and these two are orthogonally connected. So that orthogonally is just a long way of saying shares a, an edge do have a go at the puzzle the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now I get to play let's get cracking now okay I mean this this just seems a sea of information I have to say so normally in a killer sudoku which is sort of the way I'm viewing this we could instantly hone in on a cage I'm trying to see a cage that I could instantly hone in on well Imagine that was a seven cage. We would know it contained one, two, and four. But here, I mean, there really are options. It could be a seven cage. It could be an eight cage. It could be a 21 cage. And obviously, if it's a 21 cage, the amount it's got in common with a seven cage is probably de minimis. That, no, that could be a, thir ah, that's a shame. That could be a 39 cage. Only just, only just, because if it is a 39 cage, basically would have all the high digits in it. There's only one way of making six different digits in Sudoku add to 39. And that's if you use nine, if you use nine, eight, seven, six, five, and four. So this would be a one, two, three, triple. So maybe we can rule that out. Um, no, no, I can't rule that out. So the, okay, well, the only other alternative for this cage is it, because it can't be a four cage, is that it's a 26 cage. And then these cells would add up to 19. And that is because of a secret. I've just realized, I mean, I've elided over the secret in talking about 39. Um, but the secret is that any box of a Sudoku, any column of a Sudoku, and any row of a Sudoku sums to 45. And that's because of the rules of Sudoku. The rules of Sudoku tell us that the digits 1 to 9 appear once in each box. So add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. That's normally something I only tell my favourite people. But actually, if you're watching the video, of course, you're well in that coterie. Um, so if these cells sum up to 26 and the whole box sums up to 45, it's simple subtraction to say that those three add up to 19. Right. Um, 
So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look at geometry. So I'm trying to find a group of cages that just sit within one like that this group of cages is almost interesting i mean imagine imagine those three cages did take in this cell then at least we'd know the defined total of those three cages here we just know approximate values for those but because that digit can be anything from one to nine literally the value of these three cages is some number between 44 and 36, inclusive. Right, I can get rid of 31 from that cage. If that, oh, okay, if that cage was a 10 cage, I would know its contents as well. This can't be a 31 cage because 6, 7, 8 and 9, which is the maximum the digits could be, only add up to 30. If it's a 10 cage, this would have to be a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple. Uh, which would mean that couldn't be a three cage. I know it can't actually that can't be a 19 cage because you can't make two cells add up to 19. So if that is a 10 cage, that is an 11 cage and would have to be a five six pair. And then these cells, uh, these cells would have to be seven eight nine, and that's fine because that could be a 16 cage, seven nine plonking eight here, and that all works. That is very disappointing. Um, let's try, ah, oh, oh, almost. I wondered whether it was going to be those two boxes together, but then I've seen there are two things sticking out of those boxes, because obviously I know these boxes together must sum to 90, two lots of 45. Wow. Okay. I'm not, I'm not at all sure where I'm meant to look here. Maybe I can plot the path, can I? Ooh. Ooh, right, here is a thought. This green cell can only take one, ah, yeah, okay. This green cell can only take one cell of this, uh, this funny cage here. And that's because, well, let's imagine this was a one, two, three, triple. If this was a one, two, three, triple in some order, then the one is the lowest digit in there, and that's not allowed to be on the path. And the three is the highest digit in there, and that's not allowed to be on the path. So only the two can be on the path. Now, actually, what that means, I'm realizing, is that this cell is not on the path. Um, because if this cell was on the path, these two cells would have to be not on the path, and we can't orthogonally connect this to anything at all. So that allows us to do one thing. It's taken me 13 minutes to allow my, me to do anything with confidence in this puzzle. And all it is, is going to be to choose a color to say that this cell is not on the path from here to here. So we're going to, what should we make the path? I don't know, I might make this gray. So this is gray because it can't be, it can't be on the path. So either we go this way or we go this way. And this is therefore the highest or the lowest digit in this configuration. Ah. No, 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 no. This is really difficult. I've got another. So the, I think the three cell cages are quite restricted because we can only ever visit one cell of a three cell cage. Let's plot those in the grid in case that triggers something. Ah, that one. Oh, hang on, I've got, right, oh, I can't, well, I can gray these. I can gray all of those because these are two cell cages. So they have a highest and a low, a lowest digit in them sort of by force as we can't put the same digit in both positions. So that means those cells have got to be, oh, I just had some email arrive, I'll ignore that. Um, those have got to be gray. Right, this is in, this right, okay. Okay, I see what's going on, he says. Actually, I, st I do sort of see what's going on. So now how could that cell 
beyond the path from here to here. If that cell's on the path, that's a corner of the path, which means those cells would have to be on the path to get this cell in and out. We can't just end the path here. It's got to be continuous until it gets from green to red. So there would have to be an, that would be forced. And that takes three of the four cells in this 31, 10, 27 grave. And that won't work because then that would imply this digit has to simultaneously be the lowest and the highest digit. And without Schrodinger cells, don't even think about doing a graveyard of Schrodinger cells. Um, that won't work. So that cell is gray. Now, what about that cell? Now, this cell's gray, because if that's not gray, you have to do that. And again, this would become the Schrodinger cell of doom. So that's gray. That cell is now gray, because otherwise no digit in this 23, um, if, if, this is, if this is on the path, I better have an on the path color. What shall that be? Yellow. Yeah. So if, if we go yellow, all those three are yellow, and that, that cage or that grave has no highest and no lowest digit, which is a peculiar thing indeed. So that's got to be gray. Um, so it's probably, it's very strange though this, because this implies that to actually start the puzzle, I have to draw the path, which I was not anticipating at all. That cell can't be, no, it can't. That cannot be on the path because I'd have to do that. And this cage would have a, have one of these Schrodinger low and high digits. So that's gray. Yeah. This is also impossible, and that's just given me pause for thought, actually. Because what I'm wondering about is whether the path can touch itself. The instructions... Hmm, are a bit silent about that. So... Yeah, that's a bit, um, I don't know whether to trust my gut instinct here, which is to say that having made this turn, I couldn't then turn up there. So what I'm saying is you couldn't do this. But actually, if I represent it like with this line, it looks like I could do that. I don't know. I better not assume. I don't really want to use yellow. I'm going to use green, I think. Um, I don't think I better assume that I can't do that. But anyway, I think we can still draw one conclusion here, which is that this is impossible. Because if I did do this, the next cell from this position is either here or here, and that's going to leave only one cell behind in this little L triomino, and there can't only be one cell off the path um, in a triomino, because that would imply that digit was simultaneously the high and low digit in the triomino. That is a long and strange sentence. So the upshot of all that is that that gets grayed. Now that's still fine because then this can't be yellow, can't be on the path because then I've got a complete breakdown of the world there. That one, hmm, okay that one's different. Isn't that weird though? So I'm actually, I've done quite well here. I've built quite a lot of path. So, but all I'm really saying in the, so the gray cells are absolutely fine to be the low or high digit in their cage. That's all I'm actually saying. I'm not saying they are the low high digit. I'm just saying they are fine to be the low or high digit. Um, how could that cell be on the path? I don't think it can, because again, I've got to come in and out of this cell, and one of those is going to take a second cell in this L, so that's not in. Maybe that's, yeah, okay, so I can apply that logic. No, I can apply it, I can apply that logic to the corner of a triomino where it's on the perimeter. I can't apply it here. Because if that was on the path, I could duck in and out without taking either of these two cells, and that would be legal. So that cell's impossible. Um, but 
Ah, this is not easy. You see, I want to say this is impossible now. But why couldn't you do that, for example? Well, actually... Well, okay, I can rule that out, can't I? But not by thinking about the 14 cage, but by thinking about what it does to the 19 cage. Because in order to, to, to take this cell, I have to make that turn, and then I have to turn again. And then I've used... Well, I'm going to end up using three of the three cells in this grave at the top, in the top right, the 19, 12, 20 cage. Yeah, okay, and that's not going to work. So actually so yeah i'm trying to codify this in my brain so i can just apply a rule every time what we can say is every grave must have two unvisited it must have at least two unvisited cells in it by the path so i can um rule this cell out and once i've ruled this cell out i can rule this cell out now the same is true here if I do take either of these cells, I have to take three of the four cells in this two by two, and that breaks the puzzle. So those are out. This is so peculiar, isn't it, that this is apparently the way to start the puzzle. Now, this cell can't be in because that forces this, and then I haven't got two spare cells in this one, so that's out. Oh, nearly. You can nearly get rid of this one. What about that one? No, if I then turn up, perhaps that's possible. Although that might break. No, because I've, I've got two spare cells in this one. Ah, good grief. Okay. So how does this plotting of the path, or not even plotting of the path, but plotting about the cells that can't be on the path, help me? So what I'm saying here is that it's, these don't have, no, it doesn't really help me. All I'm saying is that these do have to be, well, it, they could be the low or high digit, but they don't need to be. So I don't really learn anything from this. Oh dear. Okay, so there must be some way. There's going to have to be a cage or cages somewhere here where there is an obvious contradiction. So let's scan. Let's just go through the puzzle and see if we can instantly rule out. No, you see, I'm trying to see like all of the options there are possible. Two is clearly ruled out here. So that one can't be two. That one can't be three. That can't be 44. So several of them do have an, that can't be five. Several of them do have impossible totals. One can't go in that one. But lots of them, two can't go in this one. If that was R, uh, if that was 22, that would also be difficult. That would have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Oh, okay, so this cage is interesting. Because I think this is the first cage we've discovered where there is a binary option. And whichever version of 1 and 0 applies, you know what's in the cage for sure. And I mean, this one is sort of restricted. But this one... We know it's not a two cage, so it reduces to binary. If it's 39, it's got to be 987654. And if it's 22, it has to be 123457. So there is definitely a 4, 5, and 7 in this case. That is the world's most, that's the world's worst deduction. Sorry, I mean, that's, I mean, it spans three boxes of the grid as well, so we can't even. Or Mark would pencil mark it, but I'm not going to. Um, these these can be all their options. That can't be 23. That can't be 19. 
that can't be 31 okay so this 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 does feel like it's the area that's the most restricted i've looked at this box already though didn't i what did we work out if that was 10 this was 11 oh yeah and then those this this is 7 9 that's 8 if this is 27 This is 27. This is 11 or 3. Ah, okay. So if that's 27, this is... Oh, this is, this is not 11, is what I've just seen. If this is 27... This can't be 11 because this can only be as small as 7 and 11 plus 7 is 18 and that would mean those 8 cells sum to 45 and I'd have to put 0 in there which the software will probably let me do if I, well that's an O. <laughs> I was trying to put a 0 in and failing, there you go. Um, but okay so if this is 27 that's 3 which is 30. So that's seven then, because it can't be 16. Oh, and that's right, I've got a digit. Wow. Okay, this is eight, is what I think is, is going on. And that's because there are two options for this cage, two legitimate options, 10 or 27. If this is 10, that's five, six. This is seven, nine, that's eight. If this is 27, because this can't be 11 then, it has to be three which means that has to be seven. And then for the maths to work, that has to be the balance, which is eight both ways round. So there is an eight. Oh, this is important. This is important because this, if you get an eight in this cage, this cage is not one, two, three, five, seven anymore. So I know what this cage is. This is high digits. So this is four, five, six, seven, and nine. Now, What on earth does that mean? Well, now we've now got a whole load more things to think about down here. Just trying to see if there's some, some something more obvious than scanning what these cages are and trying to work out. Maybe it's the path now. So the path, right, so let's think about this. This, this cage now, or this grave can't we can't go through the four or the nine in it but there's nothing there's nothing in the instructions that say that the the path has to visit every box for example because if we knew it had to visit this box then it would have to come into this eight Okay, what's the minimum sum of those cells? That's four, five, six, and seven, which is 22. So that's the minimum. So the, this lot have to add up to 23 or more. So that can't be a 21, can it? Because if that's 21, 21 plus 22 is too close to 45. This would have to be double one. So this is 12 or 10. Um, which might matter some way, somehow. Hang on a minute, let me think about this. Feels like everything's getting quite cluttered in this box if this isn't minimum, it minimized. If that 8 goes in this cage, that cage is forced to be a 21 cage. Because it then couldn't be an 8 or a 7 cage. So that would have to be 4, 9. Or 6, 7. All of which are appearing 
Hang on, what's going on there? If you put, let me just think about this. If you put eight in this cage, I know this is, ah, I see how this breaks. This breaks very simply. Right, I've been slow here. Okay, the point is you can't put eight in this cage for a very beautiful and simple reason. If either of these cells is an eight, these three digits sum to 21, which means that they, they don't include a one, two, or a three. So where do you put the one, two, and three in box eight? Well, they have to go in that cage, and that cage does not have a possible total of six. So that's fa that fails. So there is an eight in this cage, and that means that this cage sums to not 10, is I think what we can, well, no, we can do better than that, in fact. It must sum up to 12, because it can't be 21 plus 22. We've already said that. This would have to be double one. So this sums up to 12, which means the two digits that aren't eight sum up to four, which means they are one and three. So this is one, three, eight. There's a two in this cage. So this, right, so this doesn't sum to 21 anymore. <laughs> we are slowly iterating towards something useful. So, okay, so this is either eight, which would require one and five. The one would have to go there. And this would be a two five pair. Oh, this is one, I see. Okay, or it's seven, and this is a two four pair, and there's a one here. So there's always a one here because you can't put the one in this in this domino because there's already a one in the box. So now, well now that's a one by Sudoku, which means there's a one over there. Oh, this is good, <laughs> we are away because now, that can't be a 27 cage because it's got a one in it and the other three digits can't add up to 26 because seven, eight, and nine only add up to 24. So this is a 10 cage and it's one, two, three, four. And there's, those are not ones. Now, I'm just wondering, okay, well, if no, if this is, well, let's just carry on. If that's, if those add up to 10, this can't add up to three, it can't add up to 19. So this is a five, six pair. This is a seven, nine pair. And for some, somehow, some way, this doesn't do anything. Right, this is a three, eight pair. Oh. Now, let me just think about this box, because in this box now, this little quartet of digits has to include a six, a seven, and a nine, because they are not options in those squares. That means that cell is not six, seven, or nine. That is four or five. Ah, here's a point. Here is a point. One can never be on the path. Wherever we pl place ones in this grid, because they are going to be the low digits in their cages, they're not allowed to be on the path. So I can gray those both of those digits straight away. Now, now if this is on the path, I have to do that. If this is on the path, I have to do that. Or Bilbo Bobbins. I don't see why either of those things is necessarily impossible. Um, oh, hang on. What's going on in this cage now? Twenty. Oh, this is right. This is the next place we're meant to look now. Because look, if this was a twenty-six cage, twenty-six plus one is twenty-seven, which requires those two to add up to eighteen in order for the maths to work on this box. That requires them to be double nine. That's silly. That doesn't work. So this is a thirty-nine cage, which means these three digits sum up to six, which means these two are a two-three pair. There's a three here, so this is a three. That's a two in the corner. No song for you. That means this is a two by Sudoku. Um, it probably means other things as well. Those are not threes now, not threes. This, these, are, oh, look, we've got a one, two pair here. So these digits are a three, four pair, which means these digits are a one, two pair. This is not a four anymore. Um, we can, 
do some other things maybe I might have to just, just pause the video in a moment I can hear my daughter calling my daughter who has plastered me with unicorn stickers today um, four, five, six. this is a four five or a six we don't know what these digits are um, okay have we learned anything new I still, I still literally have got no idea where the path of this, uh, our path through the graveyard works. I know it involves those two cells. That's all I know. I'm going to make those yellow and make myself feel better about the world. Um, ah, ah, I know what that one is. This one has got a three in it which means it can't be a 21 cage and it can't be a 7 cage because that would be 1, 2, 4. So it's, it's, this is a 1, 4 pair. And that is interesting for the following reason. The, the highest and lowest digits in this cage are the 1 and the 4, so both of those get grayed. So the only digit I could take here would be the 3. It's almost getting quite difficult to get the path out of, of this box now. Yeah, if we can rule this out from the path, then we've got to take that cell on the path. Oh, this being a 1-4 pair makes that a 5, which means I can eliminate 5 from all of those cells, which means that that's the 5 in box... Ah, that's the 5 in box 8, but that's a 5, that's a 6, this is a 4 by Sudoku. Four, <laughs> 4 is the lowest digit in this gauge, so that gets grayed, which means that I get a second digit. That's got, I've got to go up into this cell, which means this is not a 9. So this digit is 6, 7 or 8, because it can't be 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5, and we've just worked out it can't be 9. But we can go into the 3 in the corner, or the corner of the of the the box so we can do that wow okay therefore therefore what um i don't know there's got to be a five up there i'm seeing got nothing here. I have got nothing. Hmm. Um. Anyone got any ideas? There must be something here that we can we can say. I'm not even sure this is this is one of the perplexing things about the graveyard of shadows is that i'm not sure at all where the natural place to look is i feel like this five is the learned digit but that did stuff down here that doesn't seem to go anywhere this oh no that can be six eight nine Ah, okay, there's a, there's a 9 in that cage, I can tell you that. And that's because I can't see how this can be an 8 cage. If this is an 8 cage, it's clearly not 1, 2, 5. And if it was 1, 3, 4, we'd have too many 1, 3, 4s in row 6. So there's a 9 in this cage now. Now, okay, so if this is... Right, there's a 6 in it. Oh, this, is, this is good. That's a 6. Because let's think about the options for this 22 cage or 23 cage. If it's 23, it's 6, 8, 9, and the 6 goes here. If it's 22, it's not 5, 8, 9, so it's got to be 6, 7, 9, and the 6 still goes there. So that's a 6. There's definitely a 9 in one of these two cells. And, but the, the right, so it's either 7, 9, or 8, 9 in this column. And there's definitely a six now in whatever cage this is up here. This is not a one cage. This is a 23 or a 25 cage. And. Okay. 
Do I know what the nature... Yes, I do. <laughs> I tell you what, this is a very clever puzzle because every time you think you're broken, there's a little tiny nugget of information that F-Jam has left behind. Look at this. That is the lowest digit in this cage. Whatever this cage is, it, the six is the low digit. So that's got to be grey. And if that's grey, that's grey. Because now... Well, if, it, if this was on the path, it would be the head or the tail of the path, which is not allowed to be. And the thing that's got me wondering about that is, do I now know whether this is on the path? If that's on the path, I have to do that. Which means I have to do that. These would have to be off the path because every cage needs two things that are off the path. So they would have to be a four nine pair which would make these two cells a 6-7 pair. Ah, I don't know, that might be right. Um, okay. Still, it's, I mean, it, it is appalling, my lack of yellowness here. <laughs> the fact that I am not considerably more yellow, and I haven't disposed yellow more into this grid, is an absolute travesty. So, what on earth do you look at now? I've not got a Scooby-Doo. I've, I don't think I can do, well, that's 18 or 29. That, they are such bad numbers to have to make this add up to. Um, Ah, maybe I can rule out 11 from this one now. If this was 11, it would have to be a 5 here. These would be 1, 2, and 3. That could would be a 2 or a 3. I don't know. I don't think I can rule it out. This one, let's just it's full of middly digits, isn't it? That's not going to be helpful. And that one... Well, that one is extreme, but I know virtually nothing about it. If it's 22 or 23, the 9 is going to be on this side of it, which would actually do some work. Is there something we can say about that then? The answer to that is I doubt it. If... If we had nine here, nine up here, nine there, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. Oh, actually, I've just seen something that I hadn't noticed before, and it's something very simple. That cannot be six, eight, nine, because the six is over here. Okay, so this is either, oh, so this is either five, eight, nine, i.e. it's adding to 22 and doesn't have a six in it, or it's one, two, three. Wow, okay, wow. Right, so this is where we look next. This is brutal. This is brutal. Right, this is a 22 cage. And the reason for that is that it's not a one, two, three cage. And the reason it's not a one, two, three cage is brutal. See if you can work out what it is. Pause the video. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. Agadmato. I hope you don't mind me copying your style. Um, the reason is, what's, what do we put in that cage now? Um, so if you just study this, this arrangement of ones, twos, and threes, the three in this column has got to be up here. So this is a one or a two in this, in this cell, which means that I've got ones and twos looking at this 17, 11, 18 cage. And that means the minimum I could put into that cage is three, four, five, and seven. I can't put six into it. So three, four, five, and seven, I think, add up to 19. That's what I got in my head when I did it, and it does seem to be right. And if, if, if these have a minimum sum of 19, they can't be 17, 11, or 18. So this cannot be a one, two, three triple. 
And if it can't be a 1, 2, 3 triple, and we've worked out it's not a 23 triple, it's a 22 triple that doesn't involve 6, so it's 5, 8, 9. And the 9 is in this domino, and therefore there must be a 5 with it because the 5 is in this column. So what we get from this is that that is a 5, 9 pair. Ah, oh, I've seen what this is going to do. I've just worked out what this is going to do. This is an 8. And the thing I'm, I'm excited about here is that 5 and 9 are the low and high digits in this triple. So they get greyed out, which means that we get the path started. It's got to come down this column. These are not 8. So they are now... Um, 7 and 9... Now, I've got to make sure, actually, this is already getting constrained because I've got to put two grey digits in there. Five, nine goes in here, so I get some more stuff going on in this column. Nine and seven go into the grid. So seven finds a home in this 23 slash 25 cage. I still can't rule this out from being 11, I don't think. So if, if, right, so if the path now turns right and takes this cell, it couldn't then come to this cell because we need, we, we would know there must be two greys in this. So in fact, we know this is grey. That's the point, isn't it? Because, because the next yellow cell along the path is either that one or that one. And the other two cells in this, two by two must be gray to cater for a low and high digit. That's always gray. Um, so the path's either doing this or this. And if it does come down here, it would be very handy because weirdly it would dis disambiguate this digit, which would then couldn't be the high digit in this cage. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ones, twos, threes, and fours into those cells by Sudoku. Ah, okay, so th that digit is not a one because it's on the path, and if obviously, then it will be the lowest digit in its cage. So that is a two, three, or a four. I don't know if I can do better than that. Five, six, seven, and nine. So this column is less. One, two, threes, fours, and eights. Right, okay, so there's an eight in this cage. Because if there wasn't, these two digits would be one, two, three, and four. And that cage would add up to ten, which it can't do. So there must be an 8 in here, which is the top digit in the cage, therefore. So it probably goes here. Um, oh, well, it does go. <laughs> in fact, it does go there. Sorry, I'm getting so bound up in the path. I'm actually forgetting normal Sudoku. That can't be an 8. So that's an 8. An 8, oh, it doesn't get us another grey digit, though. So this is 8. These two digits are now... 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s. And what does that mean? So that means that these three digits sum up to, well, it means this cage doesn't sum up to 11. So it's either 17 or 18. If it's 18, these three digits sum up to 10, which is impossible. That's, be oh, it's, it's actually, I know what these are. Ah, oh, this is so clever. This is just beautiful setting. Look at this. Look at the options now for this this two by two. Because these digits are all different, I can't make totals like ten because that would require a repeated digit. If I take the top three digits there, it's four, three, and two, which add up to nine. So it must be that because I need to get to seventeen. So actually, I can get rid of ones from both of there those. And that cell sees, sees all three of those. That is a two, three, four triple. That cell sees all of them. So there's a one in the corner, a one here, a two here, a two here, a three, four pair, 
This is now not one or two. This, ah, oh no. Okay. Right, and the path now can't come through there because that's the lowest digit now in this cage. So it's got to come down here and turn out there. And look now, this little tetromino has got two, only two spare digits. So they must be grey because otherwise there is not a low and high digit in this cage. So does it turn down? Or does it turn up? It could do either of those things. Um, I don't know is the answer. I wish I did. Ah, okay. Here's a thought. How is this now an 11 cage? If this is an 11 cage, it has to be 1, 2, 3 and 5. And that would make the low and high digits in the cage 1 and 5, which would have to go in the grey digits. That can be neither 1 nor 5. So this cage is either a 14 cage or a 23 cage. Ah, something else. That now is on the path, so that can't be a 9. So that's a 7, which makes that a 9. So I've got a 3-4 pair. Sorry, that's probably been available for ages. I've only just seen it. So now this is a 1-2 pair. Right, right. <laughs> this is so clever. It's beautiful again. How could this be a 1? It's on the path. It can't be. So that's 2. That's 1. 1 can't... Oh, it's, it just gets... Oh, this is mesmerising. F-jam already. Just take a bow. This is brilliant. That forces this not to be on the path. If that's on the path, it's a 1. It will be the lowest digit in, the, in its cage. So that's blocked off, which forces the path down here. Okay. So now five and eight. And whether this dips down to this, this to row eight or not, it's, those two have got to be on the path. And oh, this is it, right. So now let's take a look at this sextuplet here knowing that two of the cells in this cage are off the path it must be those two so these are the low and high digits within this four five six seven eight nine sextuplet that must be the nine that must be the four that's the only way that can work and actually the six seven pair therefore go horizontally which is not what i was looking at earlier on so this is five and nine now this has to be yellow because this has to get out so it can't be nine. So everything gets disambiguated once you start to work this out. So that it must come through like that now because this cell is is definitely off off out of bounds. So that's out of bounds now because we can't go in there and get out. So so this is forced. It's all forced. The nine and the four are the digits that are not used. So we know that these are six, seven, and eight now. Ah, which doesn't do anything extra for me. But now we can presumably, he says, trying to buy for time. <laughs> this digit, oh, 27 or 23. Ah, four here means I've got some stuff here. So that's four, that's one. There's a four over here. There's a one over here, which is just as useless as it can be. What we want to do is to get ones in like cells like this that affect the path, um, because that's clearly the way to do this. Oh. Hmm. Where's one in this middle box by Sudoku? One of two places, I think. Now, if it was here, it might have the ability to affect the path because that would grey this in. Though this has got to come out. Look, this, this is trapped here, so that's got to come up here. So this is on the path. Yes, okay, So, th but this is a triomino, so we can't come here or there's only one cell that simultaneously has to be low and high again, so that's off the path, that's on the path, and there must be two cells in this that are off the path, so that's off the path, doesn't tell us which one of these is a one, but does tell us that we have to go all the way up to row four, column five, with this string of yellowness. 
Okay. Uh, no, I was about to say something very foolish, so I'm going to abstain from doing that. Can I... Oh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, sorry if you've all seen the next the next obvious step here. I have not understood it yet. At least I at least I feel I've made some progress in the last couple of minutes, though. Um, right. Let's take a look at these digits and see if we can learn something more about the world. These have got to be 2, 3, 7 and 8. Why have I put 4 in there then? I do not know. That's not 2. That one, oh no, that's not very good at all, is it? Um, okay, how could this be 1? Well... Yeah, that, no, that is a fair question, actually. How could this be one, given the options along here? Well, it would rule out this being a 20 cage, so it would have to be a 9 cage, and these two cells would have to add up to 8, and there doesn't seem to be a way of making that work. So I don't think this can be a 1, which means that's a 1. That's not a 2, I'm seeing by Sudoku, because that's in the same box. So what is going on here? This, okay, this can't be a nine cage, can it? Because it's not got one in it, which means the only way it could add up to nine in three cells is by being two, three, and four, and there's nowhere to put a four in it. So this is a 20 cage, which means it doesn't have a two in it, which means that's the two in the row. And that, oh, this is nice. Oh, this is beautiful, right. There is a two now on the path in this cage. Therefore, there is a lower digit than a two in this cage, and that must be a one. And where does it go? It can't go in any of those cells. It's got to go here. Good grief. So that then gets grayed because that can't be on the path. Is it? Oh, no, I was about to say, is it really possible this adds to 27? But it is. 1 plus 2, if I make that 7, 8, 9, I think it works. That would put 3, 4 at the top of the grid, which might work. Hmm, okay, okay, that was almost incredibly exciting. Right, let's come back to this. Because what's that digit, I want to ask? Yes, okay, if this was a 7, 8 pair, this would be a 5, and it can't be. So there is a 3 in this 20 cage, which means it's 3, 8, three, eight 9. And the 9 must go here. So that's 9. This is a 3, 8 pair. That's become a 7, which means this is those three squares add up to 10, uh, which means that is a 4 in order to make the world add up. The 4, 3, 4 go into the grid. 4, 3 go into the grid. Now I know what those digits are at the top of column 3, which looks a bit interesting they are i don't know why i just put eight in there they're definitely not eight three six and seven is what they are and they are in a cage that adds up to either 23 or 25 so these add up to 16 at the moment so these either add up to nine which is quite difficult actually they'd have to be four five Okay, that's one option, is that this is a 4-5 pair and that this configuration is adding to 25. Or we're adding to 23 and these add up to 7 and they'd be 2-5. Oh, poppins. <laughs> Alright, there's a 5 in this domino is what we've just learned, which is not what I was hoping to learn. There is a 5. The high digit is a 7 but I don't know where that goes. Okay, that's got to be grey, that's got to be grey, because we can't have like heads and tails that stick out. And, um, oh, I tell you what, I can disambiguate these, can't I? Because this can't be the three, or it would be the low digit and it would be on the path. So that's eight, that's three. That's eight, that's three, good grief. 
Now that's three by Sudoku of all things. Outrageous. I mean, I've been going for an hour and you're already making me do Sudoku? Come on. Um, now there's something going on somewhere, probably. Right, what are those digits then? Two, four, five, six. And they are, they are in this cage. So we now, okay, so we let's just check this. This is a valid total for this cage. Two, four, five, and six is 17 plus one is 18. Okay, this is an 18 cage we've discovered. And there's got to be two gray digits in it. There's one here. So there's a six grade in one of these cells. So we can't put six along these two cells then. That's a seven. That's a six. So that's a six. And therefore we get the gray, the grayage done there. We get the two digits at the top are a seven, eight pair, which might put some pressure on this 21 cage. Look, or 25 cage. It's not a 10 cage anymore. One of these cells has to be yellow. Look, because we need communication between the yellowage on the left and the yellowage on the right. Right, so one thing that does, which might be total and utter nonsense, but I'm just going to mention it. How could there? No, I'm talking absolute nonsense. I was wondering if I could use the fact that I couldn't grey both of these to force a, a conclusion about nine in this tetromino thinking about it a bit harder I'm not sure I can if that's nine that would be gray I'd have to do that to get through now that doesn't that doesn't work does it oh this is no right okay forget all of that I've just spotted the obvious point which is to communicate yellow with yellow on this side of the grid that cell has to actually be yellow because I've got to get through the gap so that is yellow But I must have two grey, right, okay, and I must have two greys in those three cells. They can't be those two, or I've got the same problem. I've cut off the left from the right side of the grid. So that's grey, which means that's yellow. Um, I don't know. There's, I suspect we can do better than that, but I can't quite. My brain is not giving me the required information. Right, that's that's a five. Let's do more Sudoku. This is a two, four pair. So this is a two, four, five triple. Ah, come on. Well, do I now, or can I work out what this cage adds up to perhaps? So the options for these cells are two, four, six, and nine. And we've already got a three in here. So it's not 11, clearly, there's no 5 in here. So it's either 20 or 22. And at the moment, if I add up all of those digits together, I get 24. So I've got to miss out one of them and get to 20 or 22. So I can either miss out the 2 or the 4, and I'm going to get there, aren't I? Bobbins. Oh. Okay, oh, that one's not 2 or 4 by Sudoku. So this is 6 or 9. So one of these is not 2 or 4. Hmm, okay. The trick here might be to work out where the 9 goes. Because the 9, obviously, if that was the 9, I'd have to do a really complicated route to get out. I've got to be a bit careful about this. The other thing is that exactly one of these is yellow. Which means I'm sort of going to be going in a straight line through here. So exactly one of these or both have to be yellow. We can't, but we can't grey both of those. If I grey this, I have to go up here and then turn and go through there. That's pro I think that's probably going to be what it does. But I don't know that. I, or at least I don't think I know that. 
Right, let's try something else then. Let us try these squares, fives, sevens, and nines, and see if we can do anything with this. That's not five, that's not nine. This little foursome here doesn't add up to three. You already knew that, didn't you? Um, oh, now hang on. I've got to bring this up one further, I've just seen. Ah, and I must have two greys in a box, so that's grey which probably means it's nine. But now I've got to dip round here and take those two cells. So this is massive because now, <laughs> I don't know, these squares have got to be something. Three, six, and eight. That's not three. Um, that's not three because if that was three, it would be the lowest number in that box and on the path. So that's not allowed. So this is three. So do I now know the total of this box? I think so, because well, I, was, I remember I was worrying about these being 7, 8, 9, and having a 3 here seems to scupper that. So this is adding up to 23, isn't it? And at the mo Oh, this is massive. They add up to 6. Those two have to add up to 20, well, to, to 17, which means they are 9 and 8. So that's 9. That's 8. That's not 9 anymore. So this cage is adding up to 12 and 14, 26, which is a valid total. So I still think we're not a million miles off some, something sensible going on. These are 4, 6 and 7. And this one can't be 7 because there's already a 7 in this cage already. Oh, there's an 8 here. Okay, so this is 8. This is 7. So does that do something? Is eight the biggest number in this cage? Do we know that? Yeah, we do. Is there, the question to ask is, is there a nine in this cage? And the answer I think is no, because this can't be nine. So eight is the biggest digit and it is therefore gray. And now how do we get through this gap? We've got to go through there. Wow. So whatever this is, is not allowed to be the lowest digit in the cage. This is now grey, otherwise we can't well, we can't just dip in there and then dip straight out of it. That just won't work. So this digit is now not 9 and it's not 2 either because that would be a low digit in this cage or a high digit in this cage. So 2 and 9 come out of that. Oh, it's nearly done. Still, oh, I've got a, yeah, okay, I've got a 4, 6 pair here now. So that's a 3. That's not 4. Three, no, three is not necessarily the lowest digit in this cage. That could be a two, or that could be a two. Um, Okie dokie. What about that? No, that's a horrible cage to look at, isn't it? Oh, they can't have one in the corner of the grid because I've got a one right over there. So this is a one. Right, okay. Um, nine is quite restricted, look, but, but the fact is it's in a grey cell, which is not surprising. The... I was about to say that can't be a nine. Well, I was about to say this can't be a 12 cage, but actually, actually it can be a 12 cage. That means it probably is a 12 cage. Okay, I'm stumped. What is it that I'm meant to do here? Three. Right, three by Sudoku goes there. So maybe it's just a case of whittling away with Sudoku, these remaining cells. Let's have a look at this row. Because effectively I've placed six digits. This has to be two or five. Ah, yeah, okay, that's two or five because it can't be nine. So where does nine go in this row? I think it's got to go there. So that's nine, that becomes five, that becomes five using my pencil markings. Which means that's got to be a two. Which does absolutely diddly squat apparently. <laughs> oh no, it really doesn't seem to do anything. You rotten thing. 
Do I know what this... Uh, I'll tell you one thing I've not thought about, I don't think. And what that's what this cage adds up to. 17 is the current total. So it's 21, is it? Oh, this might be what we've missed. Um, you notice how I, <laughs> I inveigled you all in my own in ineptitude there. I'm sorry about that. So this is 17. So if that's a 6, we get to 23, which isn't a valid option. So this is 4. That's therefore not 4. This has become a 6. That's become a 9. That's huge. That is huge. Because that cannot be on the path now. So the path creeps up there. So this is a, it's not 6 or 9. I've got a deadly pattern on 2s and 4s, which needs resolving, which probably is resolved by... Yeah, OK. Uh, the way it's resolved is I must have two grey digits in this tetromino. I've only got one at the moment, so that's got to be grey, which means it's the lowest digit, which means it can't be a 4, because 4 is not lower than 3. <laughs> so that gets to be 2, that gets to be 2, that gets to be 4, that gets to be 4. Um, somehow these 6s and 7s need to resolve themselves. I can't quite see whether this is... I mean, it doesn't seem very likely to me it's doing something like this. But can I really guarantee it isn't? Probably. It looks like it's just going to go there, doesn't it? Well, let's, let's try and do this a long way. What is that digit? That is a 9 by Sudoku, so that's not 9. These squares are 5s, 6s and 7s. So this this cage is adding up to, it's got, there's definitely a 5 in this domino. So we're either adding up to 12 or 13, which must be 12. So we can get rid of the 6s here. Oh, I've got another deadly pattern, but it's going to be resolved by this. This is so beautiful. It really is. Because let's have a look at this cage now. The middle digit is the 5, so that must be on the path, which resolves that deadly pattern. Which gets rid of 7 from here and 7 from here. So that seems to have to be a 7. That has to be a 6. And I've got another deadly pattern, which hopefully will be resolved by this one. Yeah, if this was 8, it would be the highest digit in its box. And that isn't allowed. So that's 6. That's 6. That's 8. That's 8. And now all I've got to do is just close this loop off. Which is going to mean that's yellow. I'm fairly sure. <laughs> but I just want to prove it. So the highest digit in this yes i see how to do it now the highest digit is the seven so we can gray that in the lowest digit is the three so we can gray that in now we can't visit this cell at all because we couldn't get out again so that becomes gray that becomes yellow and then that cell is isolated and that is i think a logical solution fabulous absolutely stone cold fabulous start to finish original interesting beautiful at times you know, just magnificent and oozing with panache. Loved it. Absolutely loved it, F Jam. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. Let me know if there were better ways through some of the sticking points that I found. But things like this up here, that, that this being a one in the corner was just so cool. And I loved the way that there was deadly patterns galore. And like, actually that, that was my favourite bit. It was getting this was a yellow two and realizing there had to be a one in this box that couldn't be on the path and then just getting a free shaded gray digit here. That was lovely. So anyway, loved it, as you probably gathered. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Make sure you watch the stream.